So I've been playing a lot of Morgana recently, and I think she is really good, and will be getting picked and banned a lot if she hasn't already. Um, I climbed to rank 11 with her, which is the highest of any support in solo queue, so I think I understand Morg pretty well. And also I climb playing only solo queue, whereas a lot of other high low supports do a queue with an ADC. But uh, anyways, I want to right now talk about um, more Morgana in particular and less climbing in general. So um, the premise behind like how I think Morg should be played is that like people have gotten better at the game. So like good play is now about being clean rather than dirty. Um, so like when people traditionally talk about Morg, they think her strengths are mainly her like Q snare or maybe her old stun, but I actually value her W and E a lot because I think they're more reliable if you're just clean with them. So like her passive, like nobody ever talks about it. I think that's like for a good reason. It's just boring and doesn't do much. Obviously this is for support Morg. Maybe it's great for jungle Morg or something, but for support Morg, which is what I want to talk about, like all it does is like heal you a bit off your spells. Like it can be decent with your W on a cannon or dragon though. Um, but so her W is a really interesting skill. Um, like it's reliable in a way that her Q isn't because it's instant and like big so you can just guarantee you hit it on people um but they can walk out of it so it isn't necessarily doing that much damage which is why i used to think it was useless but um it's a spell so it procs airy and spell theus and scorch which means you get a decent amount of damage not even from them standing in the pool but just from touching it like um since it counts as hitting them with a spell so like early in lane w is actually your bread and butter skill i think because like you can constantly spam it and also another reason for that is like q is really gated by opportunities to hit it which you know are pretty rare but w is only ever gated by the cooldown and mana cost and mana flow band makes it pretty hard to go out of mana so overall w is like really easy to spam um and it does a bit of damage so I take it at level 1, and a lot of the time I'll even put another point in it. And as far as using W goes, it's really easy and consistent. Like, you literally just press W on them, and it's really nice how long range it is. Like, you can easily W people without getting in range, or like in their range, right? You get in W range without them being able to uh, retaliate, because you're not in their range. And again, unlike Q, it's not outplayable. So... Like, it actually works against good players, um, and it just procs all that stuff, so, like, getting airy and whatnot on them is all good, but you can actually get more ticks, and that's even better, so, like, putting it more centered on them if you can can help with that, or if they have to run a certain way, you know, putting it in their path is good. Um, it's also really strong for pushing the wave, which is great a lot of the time, so, like, level one, for example, when the enemy bot lane steps up next to their minion like the mage minions you can just um w on the minions and it'll proc on the enemy champions but also push the wave and being able to push bot is really good so yeah like that's nice if you can get it on the minions too but oh it's also nice if you can get it on a cannon because it heals you for a bit and reduces the cooldown um but like the main thing with almost every w is in lane is just hitting enemy champions and hitting minions is just like sort of bonus and the main objection to focusing on her w in lane is probably that it does no damage and i mean it, it's true that it doesn't do as much damage as other abilities uh, obviously if you could do the same damage with greater reliability that'd be broken but like if you Play around is low but reliable damage. It's really strong though. So like one important thing is to check if the enemy ADC started D shield or not. Cause if they started blade, you can just W them without worrying about anything. But if they started D shield, your poke does a lot less because it's passive. Like it doesn't quite heal them, but it doesn't do as much damage. Um it doesn't even do very much damage at all. So like not that it's necessarily wrong to W the enemy ADC if they have D shield, but uh, like if they're already taking damage, you know, you don't lose anything for it. But often if they have D shield, it's better to just W the support so you don't proc the passive. And obviously it also depends a lot on like a lot of other contextual stuff, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, 
And it's also nice since they, like, if they started D shield, they don't do as much damage, so you can focus on killing the support. Whereas if they started blade, you can just LB them without worrying about the shield passive. Um, and another thing with the low damage is that you're not going to poke someone down to low HP with your W after their first back. It's more about poking people slowly in like the first part of laning phase. Um, once they've backed, you're not really going to poke them down. It just like keeps people who are already low, like even lower. Um, getting on into, onto her Q now, I think people usually think of the synergy between Q and W as like you can W somebody after you bind them so they're trapped in the pool, but I think that's pretty unrealistic since it relies on someone walking into your Q. Uh, so like the real synergy is W kind of fucks with people's positioning since they want to stand in the minions but like to be safe from Q but then when you put W on them like not only does it help kill their minions it also pushes them off the minions so it's a lot of really great effects so what this does is it puts them in this sort of awkward spot where you might be able to Q them as they try to get out of your W and actually, I noticed in Diamond, it was hilarious how, like, consistently people would walk into a queue as they try and step out of the pool. Uh, like, Chandra players usually step back into the pool to dodge the binding, but, like, even then it forces them to take more ticks of damage from W. Um, but it's still way harder to hit Q, though, so I don't necessarily, like, throw it out. Like, against worse players, it might be more reliable, though, since, like, they'll all automatically click out of the W into the queue. But I don't know. I, and, like, as far as mind games go, like, you know, predicting that they'll juke a certain way or, like, not juke because they think you'll think they'll juke or whatever that is. Like, I don't really buy into any of that. I think they're just cues that should hit and cues that shouldn't hit. And it just depends on their position. So, like, even if you're, like, a Janna player or something, like, you can play Morgana. Like, her cue is really not as crazy as people make it out to be. Like, it just travels too slowly to be reliable. So... It's not a case of you not being good enough at it to hit like wild Morgana cues. It's literally just like impossible to hit against good ADCs. And I think it is often harder to hit against ADCs than supports. Like it might just be because they like stay further back or get move speed um, earlier, but it might also just be that like ADCs are better players. Like I think mechanically good ADCs are just really good at dodging Q. So, I mean, it's just not about mind games or anything. Like, if you're a good player, against a good player, they'll just dodge it reactively since it's so slow. So you shouldn't throw Q out until you know you can hit it. And that's important because when your Q is on cooldown, it's really easy for the enemy bot lane to all in your ADC or just chunk him for a lot of damage. Uh, but there are some good reasons for Q to hit. So like I said before, one thing you can do is use W to mess with people's positioning uh, and there are also times when someone will be moving towards you or like just close enough that you should hit because like even though it's slow it's decently wide so in those cases like if they're close enough you can just queue on them and they can't dodge it without like flashing or something like you don't even need to predict anything you should just put it directly on them and again the emphasis is on clean play over dirty play um, and another good opportunity for hitting Q is when people are standing next to a wall or tower because it cuts off their movement options um, or like other stuff that forces them into a bad position. So like having to go up for CS. So there is a lot of stuff that can get people in a position where you can queue them. But again, the queue is just super slow, which is fine if people are like close or moving towards you or whatever. But like if not, it just can't be expected to hit. So I think any plan for playing Morgana that is like predicated on hitting Q and lane is just not realistic. Um, but on the other hand, there are times when you can hit it, and it's really not about like mind games or predictions or anything. Though it's just about like taking advantage of people's positioning and where they want to move and throwing Q like right on them or right next to them. Outside of lane, Q is worth maxing over W, w though, because the snare duration goes up. Uh, it's pretty situational who you can hit it on in team fights, um, but even CCing uh, the enemy frontline can be good. Her E is actually like the most super OP broken skill, though, at least in my opinion. Uh, like, I, I think traditionally people think of amazing Morgana plays, like 
with her Q and R and stuff, but I really don't think Morg is about that so much as her E. Um, I think in a way her E is like the last hard shield in the game because like Janna and Lulu shields, that stuff is so easy to use and be effective with, whereas like not many people are clean with Morgi and it actually makes a really big difference, like especially for certain champs like you know, Alistar or Ash or Azir, they have certain abilities. If you can react to them properly with Black Shield, it's insanely good. Uh, obviously, the CC Im immunity is really valuable, but it's also worth noting that the magic damage shield is actually huge. Like, it's just ridiculously big. I don't know why. Like, honestly, I think it's a relic of when Riot was just turning out tons of champs or something that they've overlooked, because it's crazy how well her E scales. Like, each level you put into it um, lowers the CD by two seconds and increases the shield by 70 HP, which is, again, just ridiculous. Like, 70 HP per level in the shield is just so much. Uh, but the downside is that the shield only works against magic damage, which means Morgana's effectiveness uh, in her shield depends a lot on the enemy team comp. So she's much better against teams with mainly magic damage because... In those cases, your max D will just a lot of times be really annoying and impossible for them to deal with versus all their champions. But the flip side is like more kind of sucks versus like physical damage and AD assassins. Like if their damage is all physical and they have no CC, your E does nothing. Um, and often they're so mobile, they literally like move faster than your Q. So it's like impossible to hit them. So they just kill you. So like Ninja Tabby can be good so you don't die to them or just autos from the enemy ADC, but, like, the good thing is, right now, most AD assassins suck, like, it sounded like I was describing Zed earlier, but, like, I haven't seen anyone play Zed in ages, um, I think Olaf is a bigger deal right now, since he can just run you down and murder you, so you have to be really careful versus him early game, um, and, like, as long as he's strong, uh, and Lee is another one, but, like, fortunately, they're only, like, two or three good Lee players, so he's not a big problem, um, and But, like, sometimes if the enemy team comp is all physical damage, it isn't really worth it to max E first, because it only shields magic damage, so all you get out of it is the cooldown reduction. And using E is just a matter of recognizing what you need to react to, because it's really good for specific things. Like, it'll completely nullify a sedult or whatever on your ADC. So if you can react in time, um, it's really good, but... Since it doesn't shield physical damage, it doesn't necessarily do anything if you're late with it, so it becomes really important to use it at the right time, which is why I think being a clean morgue has become about using E properly, and I feel like people make too big of a deal about Q, because Q is like flashier or something, but like, and like downplay how important and hard E is to use, but I think E is actually the really hard and game-winning ability, and what's really important to be good at. And, like, I know for a fact that, like, most people aren't good at it. Because, like, I still mess it up occasionally and, like, don't react in time versus fast CC, like, Alistar combo. And I still got to rank 11. So I'm pretty sure that most people are really bad at using E cleanly. So I, I think Morgi has a lot of potential if it's used cleanly. And that's, like, the main thing about this champion is her E to um focus on so yeah max hit versus magic damage and like shield magic damage and cc and when you should actually use it is really a reaction to the situation um and as far as who you should use it on goes like it really helps to have a strong adc because the adc is like the most important person in team fights and cc just fucks them so it's really good if you can make it so your ADC is constantly able to auto-attack and move around. And it can be good on frontline, too, to help them initiate, but I think mainly it lets your ADC go ham. Because, but, like, because it only works versus CC and magic damage, you want to use it on whoever's going to get hit by that. Then, finally, her ult. I think it's a pretty random ability for her to have, since I play her like a typical enchanter support and don't really want to go, like, into the fight. Uh, the only time it's really good is at level 6, because at that point it still does significant damage and CC, and like sometimes you can get it off on the enemy bot lane without dying, so like right when you level up to 6, there's a window to just flash in and ult and shield yourself, and 
you can usually get like at least both their flashes like if not just outright kill them um sometimes like they can't even flash out but after your first assault in the enemy bot i think it's pretty useless i don't even go zanya's um like i know people think the combo is really good where you flash in an ult and go into stasis and they can't kill you but and then like you stun them but honestly like i think they just walk away and again like i like to play more more like a standard enchanter i don't think her old zanya's is a great combo um so like in team fights i usually just use ult on whoever comes into range it doesn't matter who like if you're in your back line and they're in ult range the enemy champion they're on your back line so chances are you're gonna want to kill them no matter who they are and that kind of goes for her binding too like it's usually way too hard to hit on the enemy back line in team fights whereas it's really easy to hit front line and they're the ones you want to kill in standard fights um but one nice thing about the ult is it reveals invisible champs so like one of them i forgot to mention earlier is kha'zix like kha'zix is super annoying since he does a ton of physical damage and is like insanely slippery but you can ult when when he's near even if he's invisible and it reveals him so th that's kind of good but like he's still so hard to deal with and you can't shield his damage so he's really annoying yeah to deal with anyways because uh, you just can't lock him down and find him um but anyways i don't get zanya's or even like stopwatch i really just don't like that sort of old like playmaking approach um i i think it's a lot better to build more like a typical enchanter uh the one difference is that athene's feels way better for her than crucible because you already have your E, which is enough for most CC in like most games. And you do some decent damage and have decent AP ratios. So Athene's is really nice. Uh, but Sensor is also really good too. Um, I like it because Black Shield makes ADCs free to auto attack without worrying about CC. So they can abuse Sensors really hard. Um, and plus it gives 60 AP and 10% CDR and some mana and shield amplification so it's just a good item overall uh, and usually choosing between sensor and athenes i'll just think like okay um if my adc and other people on my team are gonna like stand there hitting people or not um and if they can hit people for a while then sensor and if not athenes uh, and then uh redemption is good too especially because morg has no like innate healing in her kit which kind of sucks for an enchanter so it's nice to get that from Redemption. Um, and by the way, I think they should be called Babysitters instead of Enchanters, but that's another topic. Um, the last item I get sometimes is Locket, because burst some teams, and like especially Assassins, you just need to not get bursted. And it's nice to have a shield that works for physical damage. Um, and Locket's also nice because it doesn't give any CDR. So you can get Boots of Lucidity to cap your CDR quickly and then get Locket without overcapping. But then if you are getting more CDR, usually tabbies are better, unless the enemy team is really AP and CC heavy. Um, like, tabbies just help not get one-shot by the enemy Rengar or Caitlyn or whatever, which makes it a lot easier. And you pretty much always go the blue item. Like, it gives 20 gold every time you W someone, which is really nice, because you can just press W on people from a safe distance for the entire game and get a lot of gold that way like your w range is twice your auto range so it's really your main poke and since you should be so far back and like out of the enemy bot lane's range i usually go refillable since i don't need all three potions occasionally versus something like kate zyra i'll get three pots though um and then sometimes dark seal can be uh, good on it because even though it doesn't build into anything it's just really gold deficient on its own and you, know, you can use the AP and mana so her itemization is fairly normal for an enchanter support um, like I don't go Mobius so uh, all since all I want to do is babysit my DC and for runes Aerie and Scorch are really nice again for damage in every W mana flow is great since you can spam W um, also something with Aerie is it gives a shield on your E, which makes it a small physical damage shield, um, which is nice if you just need a shield for physical damage but only have your E up. And it's also nice with Athenes, where you're, between Aerie and Athenes, your E actually can sort of help people, even if it's not just against magic damage. 
Um, but anyways, I like Absolute Focus since you should be usually like almost full HP. Like, there's no reason for you to go up and take damage most of the time. It just isn't worth it. And you scale well with AP. And then I think Inspiration Second wouldn't be bad for free boots and CDR. And you could get a stopwatch if you really wanted that playstyle with her ult. But personally, I'm just not a fan of that like playstyle. So I've been going Resolve because it actually does something early game. Like Revitalize also sort of scales because it makes her E bigger. And might make her passive a little better too. Um, and then I think Bone Plating is the best in terms of tankiness. So, like it makes her level 6 all in possible. And it also fits how you usually don't want to take damage that often since it only works uh, every 45 seconds. For support matchups, since I think Morgue is all about her E, she's much better versus engaged support. So like Blitz and Leona are you know, the champs who traditionally she's thought of as like counters, but I never see those. I think Thresh and Alistar are much more common for engaged supports, and I think the Alistar matchup is one of the most like heavily dependent on your ability to react in time with E, because his W is just really, really fast. And then a lot of the time, if you don't shield it and shield yourself like after he knocks you up to try and like block his stun, he'll just walk over and stun your ADC. And like by that point, you lost the trade. But if you can shield you uh, in time, you have a lot of pressure in the lane. So uh, what I like to do in that matchup is just click on Alistar and then put my mouse back on myself. So Morg like goes up to auto him, and if he headbutts, I can react quickly by just pressing E. And then always just have my mouse on whoever he's about to potentially combo. And then the other support in, who engages I see a lot is uh, Thresh. And I think because Thresh just has a lot of like playmaking he can do. But really the only time Thresh can engage versus you is while you're level 1. Because um, you can trade fine versus him level 1. Like you can outrange him and outpoke him. But... He can just walk up and flay your ADC with Aftershock, and he takes like no damage in return while you and I, your ADC try and hit him, whereas the enemy C get, ADC gets to chunk your ADC. So sometimes I take Q level 1 versus Thresh to try and stop him from walking up level 1, especially like playing versus the same Thresh player over and over again. I think he'll expect me to take W level 1, so Q is like a switch up. Uh, and by the way, people probably think of, like, I don't know, Alicopter or, like, Bunny Foo Foo or some random one-tricks as, like, the good Thresh or Alistar players, but I don't think they're the best of their champs, even in Solo Q. Like, honestly, like, pro players are the scariest on Thresh and Alistar. Like, I play a lot against, like, Matt and Smoothie and Sheep, and I think they're a lot harder to lane against. Like, a good Thresh will use his, like, pressure level 1 to get level 2 first, and then... The walk up while you're still level 1 and flay your ADC and hook him like out of his flash and kill him. So that's really scary. And I don't think taking E level 1 would work as a response since you have no pressure in like trades and pushing or anything. But like once you get E, it's really on you. Like it's possible to shield anything engaged supports do. So like if you're clean with shield, you can stop them from doing anything. And they can try and roam. And but like you can just make play spot and kill their ADC and get tower and dragon and stuff as long as you have a good like strong ADC and jungler so like apart from those difficulties with Thresh and Alistar like you can stop playmaker supports from making plays so they're pretty much useless which is why Morg is great versus them so I like to ban Jenna and Lulu while playing Morg because they don't really make plays they just shield their ADC and their shield like works on physical damage and yours doesn't so your ADC just like auto loses the trade and they kind of outscale you in team fights unless you have like a hyper carry ADC and the enemy team is like all magic damage. So those matchups are a lot harder. Uh, like versus engage supports, you auto win unless they, you know, unless they do something. But versus other enchanters, it's the other way around. Although I will say Lulu, especially if you have Kaylin, if you can cue her at level two, the chance you see with trap is enough to like potentially. Uh, do almost your full HP with Ignite and everything. So, like, it's not the ideal matchup, but, like, it is playable if you want to play. Uh, and having a Caitlyn is really nice in general, since you can just push, like, push the wave and poke them under tower. Like, it's really easy to um, push them in, and once you do, you can just put down her traps in your W, and it becomes really awkward for their ADC to farm. And if you had a Q, she can just follow with a trap. And it's also nice with Caitlyn and Ezreal that they almost never go D shield, because I think it would just, like, hurt a uh, good ADC's ego to not start blade on Caitlyn, but like with most supports, it's hard to get in range of 
Kate to poke her without dying, so she doesn't need a D-Shield, but with Morg, you can easily just W her without taking anything in return. And also, if you have Ezreal as your ADC, you can mess with their positioning a lot and push them off the minion wave, so then your Ezreal can just Q them. And then, like, Varus is also pretty popular, and Morg is good with Varus, because, like, your level 6 on is really strong since you have so much CC. And it's nice to get Sensor Rage Blade, since he can just go crazy, and then... Kogma too, like it really depends on the Cog player, but like there are good players who play Kogma that will just like 1v9 if you shield them. And like other hyper carries are good as well, like Tristana, you know, can go crazy if you shield her too. Um, and just in general, whoever on your team is doing well, like you can often just shield them and they can just go in the game. But like, anyways, going back to the problem with Enchanter supports, I think Morg is harder to win with versus other Enchanters since... Like, they don't do anything and just auto-win, so, like, if the enemy support picks Nami or something, I like to play Sona instead, because Sona is, like, the ultimate auto-win champ. Like, she has no CC or anything compared to other supports, but she just makes her own health team's health bars higher than the enemy team. So, like, the versus other Morganas, too, I pick Sona, and she really should never hit you with Q. Like, you should always just dodge it, and, like slowly win the lane by poking and out sustaining with Q and W since those aren't dodgeable. And Sona W negates Morg really Morg W really easily and it also just Sona W outscales her. Um like maybe the only hard part is level six when Morg can shield herself and flash ult, but apart from that you should just win slowly as Sona versus Morg. And then the new Ceres is like insanely good on Sona because it gives 20% CDR in addition to a ton of mana and AP and a big shield. Uh, also, Spellbinder sounds good on Sona, but the problem is she already has such great items like Sensor and Athene, so I'm not sure if it's worth it. Uh, and as for runes, I've just been going Sorcery Resolves. Like, the gold on selling pickpocket got, items got nerfed, and like it's probably not worth it to go pickpocket anyways, because, like, Aerie is a lot safer and easier to proc, um, and then you could go Inspiration Secondary, which would be greedier since, like, the CDR helps you scale well, and the free boots have great gold value, but Inspiration doesn't do much for the first 10 minutes of the game, and, like, Resolve is safer in that it helps you not die, which is really important for Sona, uh, but I want to go, I don't want to go, like, too deeply into how, like, if Sona is good or bad, or, like, how to play her, but, like, um, she definitely does complement Morgana really well in terms of matchups, so, like, you just play Morgana against the playmaker supports, and then if someone picks an enchanter support, you can just play Sona against that, so it's a really sort of way where you should always have a winning matchup.